I've wanted a 3D printer for years, but I could never find the answers to the questions I put on the thumbnail. What do I print with it? Which one do I buy? How much is it going to cost? Which software do I need to use? Can I learn how to use the software? In this video, I'm going to tell you the answers to those questions that I came up with and whether I think there is a place for a 3D printer in a modern workshop. Question number one, what am I going to print? Any equipment that I buy to go in my workshop has got to earn its space. It's got to do a job. It's got to be a worthwhile use of the space that I'm dedicating to it. And I just didn't know what I could design and print. Something that I know I wanted came from a YouTube video that I saw where a guy had 3D printed some inset D handles for the drawers in his cabinet. These are great, but they allow the dust in. So these 3D printed handles would be superb, but I didn't know if I could draw them. And then I came across Thingiverse and GrabCAD, just two examples of websites where there is an absolute wealth of items that other people have designed and uploaded so that you can download them for free. Here's a perfect example, a featherboard to go on my bandsaw, I didn't draw that. At the time, I wouldn't have had a clue how to draw it. So I downloaded it, popped it into the software and printed it. And I've saved 20 or 30 quid. It didn't come with a bar to go in the mitre slot. So I drew one of those. And now, as I said, I've got a fully working featherboard for the bandsaw and I haven't spent any money. I also drew some hold down brackets to go on my CNC. Yes, I did say CNC, but that's for another video. And my greatest accomplishment yet, my 3D printed flip stop for the radial arm saw. And that's after very little time spent with Fusion 360. And we'll get into that later in the video. So it's no longer a hurdle. What to print is a non-issue. Question number two, which one to buy? Again, a veritable quagmire for you to wade through, or at least that's how I felt about it. And after looking at all of the sales and marketing information and watching an endless number of videos, I still couldn't come to a conclusion. Luckily, I remembered that I knew somebody, a friend of mine, who'd been 3D printing since time began. Gaz, my sincere thanks. He helped me out by pointing me in a perfect direction for a beginner. You really don't want to spend hundreds and thousands of pounds on a, an item if you don't know it's going to be the thing for you. If you don't know, you're going to be able to make it work for you. So I took his advice and I ended up buying a smaller, cheaper unit made by Creality. It's called an Ender 3 v2 so the important features to consider when you choose a 3d printer width of the bed depth of the bed height of print and whether the bed's heated or not with a heated bed apparently it makes it much easier for the filament to stick on that initial layer which we'll come to in a bit how much do i need to spend well as just mentioned when you're going to dabble your feet into the water for the very first time, you don't really want to be looking at a potential mortgage to buy the kit. The Ender 3 is a very affordable 3D printer. I think I paid £180 plus VAT. Shipping was free. It came from a UK warehouse, so there are no import duties or taxes to pay. And it arrived, I think, think of memory served in a couple of days, maybe three days. So it was really accessible and really affordable. And finally, the software. This seems to be a potential hurdle for an awful lot of people, including myself. I built it up to be more of a mountain than a molehill. Whereas in reality, it's actually a molehill if you approach it in the right way. What I mean by that is don't set yourself up for a fall. Don't try and design a really complicated item as your first entry into CAD software. 
Uh, so don't come up with a suspension bridge or the Eiffel Tower as your first attempt. Just draw a square, draw a rectangle, a box, something dead simple. So you've decided which 3D printer to go for. It's arrived and you've assembled it. Just a note on assembly, it was really quick and simple. And there's an absolute plethora of videos available on YouTube about the assembly. So I won't get into that here. I think you'll find it a walk in the park as I did. Connectivity again, dead simple. These 3D printers run off of files that you save to a little micro SD card. With the Creality, you can connect it via USB cable, but there aren't really any benefits for doing that. It, you're not going to see a visual representation of what the printer is doing on the screen. And if using non-active USB cables, they're going to be sub five meters anyway, which means you can turn around and look at the thing. So there's no benefit running it direct from the PC. So connectivity is not an issue. You merely save your file to a micro SD card. So onto the software, potentially two separate pieces of software, one for drawing your item in and then one for preparing it ready for the printer. Drawing the item, I've chosen Fusion 360 because I can also use it to create things to burn with a laser and to create things to run on my CNC. So it made sense for me to use the the same piece of software for each. So I've only got one learning curve to go through. When I've drawn my item or if I download an item from one of the websites mentioned, then I can load it directly into the software that comes with the 3D printer or that's recommended to go with the 3D printer that you've chosen. So the next section is going to be drawing the mitre bar in Fusion 360. This is not an all-encompassing introduction into Fusion 360. All I'm demonstrating is this is the way that I've found how to do something in a very short period of time. And the message that I really want to put across is that it's dead simple and accessible to all. I'm also going to put this in a separate video, which should follow on directly from this one, merely to keep the video size down a little bit. Thanks for watching. See you in part two.